Okay, here I am on the uh, on my balcony, just uh, chugging down a bit of the uh, cold mineral water. Um, I found out that the the other islands, uh, which is the bigger island that's uh, north of the, oh sorry, south of this one. Um, yeah, I think it's south. I'm not sure. Anyway, anyway it's the bigger the, the bigger of the two islands in any case. Um, that actually has seven thousand people. Because I was talking to um, uh, to one of the uh, uh, the owners here, and I found out she's actually Japanese. So it's a, it's a local guy uh, and a Japanese lady uh, that run the place. So they're, they're married couple, and she's been here for eighteen years. So. Um, and she was actually living just down the outskirts of, uh, what was it, Osaka? Or, one of the major airports in in, uh, in Japan anyway, so it was, uh, although she was out of the urban area, she was on the fringe, so uh, this is a totally different experience for her. She's been here 18 years, so it's quite some time. Uh, interesting lady to talk to. She, uh, she doesn't cook Japanese here because she can't get the ingredients, so she says she can't do it properly, she, there's no point really trying it, so obviously adapted the, um, the diet for local consumption. She said that they, uh, they used to try uh, sushi um, and they caught local tuna to make the sushi. Um, although, I don't, do you really make sushi? I suppose it's just raw anyway. But the point was, it's, it's, the, she says it's warmed up here to such an extent that um, they, uh, they don't bother uh, cooking it, or they don't bother making it in the case of sushi anymore because they can't keep the, uh, the fish fresh. So she said it wasn't a problem with the tuna, the quality of the tuna, because I know the Japanese are very particular about the quality of their tuna when they do make sushi. It has to be very high grade. Apparently that wasn't the issue. It was just that, that it's, so, it's much warmer here and it's harder to keep things uh, fresh. So that's interesting, because I'll, I'll attest to the fact it's warm. It's definitely warm here. Um, yeah, so that was interesting background information. It's the first real chat I've had to... I, I asked uh, her husband about uh, the possibility of being given a tour of the of the island. He sort of asked me how long it would be, how long I'd want. And I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm open as far as I said, a couple of hours or half a day, whatever. Uh, whether it's a car or whether it's uh, a motorbike, it just seems crazy if I'm on this island, I don't check it out. It's a bit frustrating for me, I can't, because I can't get a driver's licence. I could have taken the risk and taken up the offer of my uh, uh, my, my old next door neighbour, the Colombian guy, um, Adana, Adana, I don't know what his name is, uh, it's a name I've never heard of before, but he was something like that, and uh, he was generously offered to, to give me a, uh, a lift into town and what have you, and I, and if I was happy with, with riding with, with him, it would have been okay, but he wasn't using a helmet to my knowledge, and I don't know whether he had a license, so if I, if I, if I, the reason I'm worried about that is I just want to make sure that I'm covered for medical insurance in case there's an accident because, you know, insurance companies will use any excuse to not cover you. So I think that's sensible. Mm. That's essential. And by the way, this is interestingly, this is the first season here that they've actually had refrigerators in the rooms. They've got little bar fridges. And um, it's essential because, um, uh, you know, you need to having a supply of cool drinking water I think is is an essential here it would have been pretty pretty rough uh, staying here without that I think uh, that's one of the, one luxury I'd say is definitely important I don't mind not having aircon you don't need it uh, mosquito wise I have been bitten but it was only on Friday so it must be a particular uh, type of mosquito that only bites on Fridays uh, well I'm being a bit of facetious there but what I've done is actually I use the, the fan on low level, as it causes enough of a uh, of an airflow over the bed to put off the, um, the mosquitoes and I also pull up a sheet, a very light sheet over myself to protect me. Last night I didn't get any bites, so, um, and that was Saturday night, the previous night I got a few and then I, I, uh, I put, a, put the cover over me with the, with the, the, the low setting for the fan. Uh, and it was fine. So, but last night I even turned off the fan and it was fine as well after about one o'clock. And of course the bird seems to go over that corner there, makes this incredible noise, which I did record and you've heard. And it does that at all hours. It did about, I think about, about twice last night. 
So that's a, that's a uh, an alarm you could do without, but it's not too bad. Uh, had very noisy French um, um, guests that were leaving. It they, they they started making a racket about twenty past five this morning, and they were very loud. They only had one volume when it came to talking. That was loud. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were French because they actually said goodbye to the uh, the owners here and saying Madame. So that's a giveaway that they were French. Um, I thought they might be German prior to that, but uh, no, I think they were French. So basically, I'm waiting to hear from the um, from the, the owner here whether he's uh, can arrange some sort of a, uh, a, a, a an in ad hoc type tour or something. Just have, just check out the rest of the island, take some footage as well, so you guys can see a bit more of the island. Because I mean, I'm only I'm really confined to just here and down the road and then walking down the beach on either side and it's just it's it's just really annoying because um, that's why I took the push bike out, it would give me a little bit more range but um, I had a disaster with the gearing so that wasn't good and, um, which is a shame because you know I, I, I think I could have got, got a few kilometres that way and probably got into uh, where the village is but it's still limiting. It's not as good as having a tour on, a, on either a motorbike or a car. I want to see the whole island. It's not a big island. I think it's only about five or seven kilometres wide. It's it's not huge, but yeah, I'd like to see I'd like to see a bit of it. And um, uh, I know there's better beaches around. I haven't even had a swim yet, which is a bit of a, a shame. Um, that's just me. I mean, but every time I go down there, every time I walk down that road. Uh, I come back and I'm exhausted on I'm walking back. You know, it's just uh, it, it's it's a reasonably steep hill, and it is particularly high. I um, I'm, my tolerance to heat's actually improved with age, but I'm finding this place to be one of the hottest I've encountered. So, uh, mind you, back in Cairns, apparently they've had stinking hot weather. Um, they've had really high humidity, and uh, there was one day that was 37 degrees. At, uh, on a Saturday, I was checking it out online, so uh, I'm not missing there. I'm, I'm sure it'd be more uncomfortable in Cairns. And as I say, I'll get by okay with just the fan. The fan is adequate. And having a cold shower is not an issue either. Although someone said in the, um, in the, the booking.com reviews that uh, they have the capacity to switch over to, to warm water for your shower if you want. Um, uh, that, that's strange. I didn't know that existed. They don't advertise it. so. Uh, but it's not an issue anyway. Uh, yeah, another reviewer said it's good to have a cool shower because you feel so hot when you, you, you walk any distance here. And that's true. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm a little frustrated with the, uh, with the lack of mobility here for me. But, um, you know, that won't, that'll change. It's just the second to last full day I'm here. Um, tomorrow, Monday, is the last full day I'm going to be here. And on Tuesday, I'm heading over to Ao Nang uh, Beach, and uh, and there there'll be uh, a lot more infrastructure and uh, well, it's all a flat environment, and there's there's also some level of public transport in it. You've got um, uh, I forget what they call them. This is a term I haven't heard of before, but they're basically like sidecar type uh, motorbike taxis. So they've got provision for two seats on the side, and. Um, you know, a poor man's tuk-tuk, I guess. So I don't know if it's, that's actually an accurate description because tuk-tuk's a pretty poor man's vehicle anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, not sure. But anyway, the um, yeah, the, I, I researched it and there is... And they do have these, um, these vehicles. Uh, I'll put up on the screen what the name of them is because I did find it. And uh, they surely only cost about uh, 40 baht uh, to go around the beach area. So... Uh, but the owner, owner of the, the, the next place, that the, um, he t uh, got back to me on uh, email, and on SMS, sorry, text me back, and um, and he told me that I, he could pick me up from the uh, the Tesco Lotus, which is about a kilometre in from the beach. So what I might do is just get one of those um, uh, motorbike uh, taxis to uh, to there and get him to pick me up. Otherwise, I'll, I'll find out how much it costs to go straight up to his place because he's a couple more kilometres up the road. So we'll see. It may not be that. If it's not expensive, I'll just get the the uh, the vehicle straight up to his place. There's no point getting off and getting on against a hassle. So, yeah. 
but he did offer to pick me up from there anyway. So it's so obviously people do use that service. So that's good. I'll probably go out and um, do a beer run at around five. It's a little cooler then. The sun's certainly further down, is, um, which is a godsend. The good thing is that it is a healthy environment. My, uh, my breathing has definitely improved. I don't feel that congestion anymore. That went after a couple of days. So, um, yeah, it's, it is a healthy environment to be in. So, uh, it's got another week or so of uh, clean air until I return to uh, Saigon. I've been checking the, uh, the air quality in Saigon using the app for public transport there. And it's actually been, re um, it's the cleanest it's, it's been recording. And because of the, the TET's now on, and obviously there's a lot less people in the city and a lot less people working in, in, uh, in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh, so the, the air pollution has dropped dramatically. So, um, yeah, um, I mean, it's nice to have a change of scene, but uh, I don't know whether I should have done this or not. I, I did change my booking um, in, um, in Bali from down by the sea because it just, uh, I, I just don't want to have to put up with the, um, the isolation again and, uh, without having mobility. Um, I think it's a smart move because I, I checked out where I'm staying. I know the people, they're great. But on top of that, there's also quite a few uh, bars in the vicinity. I was quite surprised. There's, there's at least half a dozen, maybe eight or even more bars that are within walking distance of where I'm staying. So um, that that's good to know. At least I've got a few outlets there for a bit of social interaction and uh, get a few cold drinks. And, um, and then the beach just down the road from that. So... Yeah, it's not a bad plot spot to stay. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.